Hi there, my name's Liz Dempsey. Uh, welcome to Principles of Marketing, um, Lecture 1. Um, the lecture that we'll have in the first week of teaching next week will be Lecture 2. So make sure you access those slides um, via the My Hallam site. Um, if you go into my log into my Hallam and then click on the Principles of Marketing site, you'll see that there's all the um, information there. So um, just so that those of you that have a seminar earlier in the week are able to access the lecture material because it's helpful for your seminar, um, I've decided to screencast this um, specific one as per my email. What are we going to talk about today? So today we're going to consider the sort of introduction to the module. So consider what is marketing, okay, and explore some of the definitions and, and theory behind that. I'm going to talk specifically about the notion of an exchange process because that really underpins um, this idea of what marketing is. How do we then create value? Because that's really important in marketing. Value is a, an, an interesting and complex concept. Um, and then thinking about how we, um, how we then also create competitive advantage. Competitive advantage is the idea that we have something um, different from the other organisations or companies that we are competing against for a customer's attention. But as we get later into the lecture, we'll explore that concept in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's start off by thinking about what is marketing. Um, so some of you might have already um, looked at what marketing is. You might have studied business studies um, at GCSE or A-level. Um, so, so some people might think that marketing is, is just about um, jazzing up something such as a product and to make it more attractive to the, um, to the customers, but without thinking about what that core product is. So if you think of, if you think about it in the sense that even if you make that core product or service appear more attractive, so like putting lipstick on a pig, not saying that pigs are unattractive because this one here is pretty cute, um, it's still a pig. So it doesn't make any difference to what the core benefit the customer is receiving is. And, and we only ever fool customers once. Always remember that. So it may be that by putting lipstick on a pig, you might sell that pig the first time. But you're certainly not going to achieve anything in the long term with your customers. And, and relationships in marketing, developing that loyalty is really, really important. People are really successful in marketing go way beyond the kind of surface polish, if you like. So it's not just about polishing something up and making it seem more attractive. It's about a really in-depth understanding and knowledge of customers and what they're interested in. Knowledge of who we're competing against. Um, and what our business environment looks like. And that's those are the kinds of things that we're going to be exploring um, in this module and really thinking about. Um, so thinking about not just creating um, a product that appears attractive to our target audience, no matter what it is, but something that's developed knowing what our target audience is really, really interested in um, and, and how we might best serve their, their needs and their wants and, um, and ultimately what represents value to them. So in this module, this is ultimately what we're going to be exploring and, and what you're going to be learning about. So how do we create something that is really very attractive to the customers and, and, and ultimately serves their needs? How do we do that? What's the process involved? And how do we operationalize that into, into some plan of, and, and plan of work and plan of um, action? Might be familiar with the Chartered Institute of Marketing. So the Chartered Institute of Marketing is the marketing industry's professional body, um, and they um, have a series of professional qualifications that you can complete. So they're our kind of home as professional marketeers. So this is their definition of what marketing is. So you'll see it talks about the management process, and and then it starts to visit some of the things that we talked about on the last slide. So that identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements. So this idea that we need to understand what the customer's interested in, what their requirements are, anticipate what they might be in the future. So there's some notion of sometimes we have to work out what they're going to, how those needs might change because they don't stay the same and then satisfying them. So that comes back to the idea of not just saying we're doing something, but actually delivering it as well. Um, and here it's, it uses the word profitably. So it, it's 
from a commercial organization perspective this is something that we're going to do and we're going to make money from it because that's our business objective and that for any business um, in many ways is their ultimate objectives now in in today's climate there are obviously organizations that use marketing that aren't just interested in a profit so they might be um, interested in in achieving some other goals it may be that they're a social enterprise and they've set up simply to create jobs for people it may be that they're a charity um, and, and they're interested in raising money so they can help others um, and marketing can be used in all of these contexts it may be that they are change for life and they're trying to encourage and change consumer habits and behavior maybe a stop smoking campaign so there are many many different contexts where marketing is relevant so don't let um you know don't let your understanding of what marketing is be defined simply by um being able to make a profit because actually uh, it reaches far beyond that now as you can see at the center of this quote is the customer so remember that in marketing we're always thinking about being customer focused so the customer should be pretty much at the heart of everything um, that we're doing um, okay so let's look at some further marketing concepts too so this marketing con this is the marketing concept um, so this is the idea from a um, business uh, organizational point of view um, that talks about us meeting our goals. So our goals might be about increasing profit, they might be about changing behavior, they might be about engaging stakeholders, um, but it's all about exceeding those customer needs better than our competition. So no matter what we are doing, in any context, we will be competing with somebody. Okay? In this module, we deal with developing a marketing plan, so a plan of action. So that plan, it is the op operationalizing of uh, marketing. So there might be a strategy that underpins that, and that strategy element you'll look at in um, second year in the strategic marketing module that you do. Um, in, in this year, we're focusing on the kind of real kind of day-to-day -day opera, opera, I can't say that word, um, putting into action uh, our marketing plan. very beginning I talked about this exchange process so at the heart of a marketing transaction is an exchange process okay so we essentially exchange something of value for something of value and usually for us as an organization if we're looking at it from an organizational perspective we're going to pass something to our customers which are likely to be products or services okay um and they are going to provide us with something of value think about that element of profit or achievement of goals um so it, it's it's all down to that fundamental fundamental issue of exchange something for something okay and that's something we need to understand right from the outset a couple of points to accompany this so it's not always money for goods as i said on the um previous slide so sometimes we buy services so we don't actually get anything tangible so think about when you go to get your hair cut you know what you're actually buying um, and sometimes it's um it's about a feeling that we might be um buying so you think about when you give money to charity you get something from that but it's nothing tangible um and it's not even a service in the sense of you know having your hair cut or um going to see a, a beautician or something such as that it's, it's actually a feeling that you're buying into. And remember that this exchange can sometimes be relatively complex in the sense that it's not always just about the core product. And we look at this throughout all of your degrees. It's something we'll explore in a, in a lot more depth. But more recently, um, mainly due to my younger daughter, we've been going to these, um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but you'll probably hear of them now you're in Sheffield, but these, um, uh kilo sales where you buy second hand pre-loved is the is the phrase that lots of marketing phrase that lots of companies are using so second hand clothing um and you bag it you choose what you want usually in a big haul you bag it all up and you pay by the kilo so they weigh it and then um and then charge you at the end now for me the reason i'm talking about this is because often the experience is just as as fun as the actual um actual, actual stuff that you come away with so 
you might come away with stuff that you're not ever going to wear and it just ends up going back um, and that was one of my first experiences but it's actually quite good fun going around the rails feeling like you're searching something so it, you, you're buying something much beyond that uh, initial um, goods that you might be thinking about. So always think about the complexity of the exchange process. A couple of things to think about with regards to this exchange process. So remember that in any or um, most transactions, customers have got an increasingly big choice. So there's there's a, there's a lot of choice out there. Um, so there's more suppliers and there's more um, and particularly these days with, with comparison size, there's many more opportunities to make those comparisons on perceived value. So what we think we're going to get out of this. So we'll talk about something of value um, a little bit later. Okay. Um, so, you know, what is it that, that we're getting and could we get something better somewhere else? Um, and it's kind of that balancing of this exchange process, if you like. They're making sure the two are kind of equal. In most cases, as I said earlier, that a single transaction is actually meaningless. So lots of organisations will say that they don't make that profit um, or achieve their goals based on a single transaction. OK, so whether it's influencing somebody's behaviour, you need to do that more than once, or whether it's engaging them with your brand, you want them to return and become loyal. Um, so actually, we need to deliver on the promises that we make. So that goes right back to what we were talking about a couple of slides ago in terms of having that really deep level of, of understanding of what the customer's interested in. OK, so have a look at this slide. It looks a little bit um, complex when you first look at it, but the top arrow is made up of an organization that sees marketing as very much um, a process. So we make a product, we design it, we procure um, the ingredients or whatever, whatever it might be, and then we sell that product. So we think about how we're going to advertise it, distribute it, is there a service element, how much will we sell it at? What we're trying to move more towards is the bottom, um, the bottom diagram. So this is where we think more about value. So we're more focused on understanding the customer and what they're interested in. So it's not just about making something, whatever that might be, and then thinking of ways of selling it. It's thinking about what do we need to make? What is it that our customers are interested in? So you'll see at the very start of the process here, we're talking about things like needs, segmentation, which we'll visit, revisit later in the module, positioning. So how do we determine what it is that our customer's interested in? So which value are we going to provide? And then we think about how might we provide that value? Um, so what level of price would be appropriate? Is there a service element that's required? How do we develop products that are innovative and that customers are interested in? And how do we um, increasingly think about how we provide that value and, and don't underestimate concepts like convenience and ease of use. So you'll see lots and lots of um, products that, also, that really are just innovations in the sense that they make the same product easier to use somehow. Okay, so if you look at something like tins of tuna, um, just as an example, um, and how there have been innovations in terms of um, tuna that you don't have to drain. So it's a real pain, isn't it, when you open it in a tuna um, and you've got to drain the, the oil or the, the water, whatever it's contained in off. Um, and, and, and obviously, if you're eating a tin of tuna on the go, which some people do, um, then that's really problematic. So how do we solve that problem from the customer? Well, we create a tin of tuna that doesn't require any um, drainage. So we can just open the tin and eat it straight away. So you know, that's really thinking about what what is the, what are the problems the customer is seeking to solve. Okay, we obviously need to make sure that if we spent a lot of time here developing this value, that, that we then tell the customer about it. If they don't know about it, about communicating the value, they're clearly not going to come to us. Okay, we have this kind of awareness level. If we're not aware as a customer that a certain product exists. Clearly, it's never going to be in our choice set. So that's really important too. So the book. The bottom um, diagram shows marketing more as a philosophy. So it's concerned with um, creating and sustaining and communicating that value to the customer rather than just thinking, right, let's make a product. Let's think about how we can sell it. It's about what should that product look like? How will it develop the best value for the customer? 
how do we provide that value and then how do we tell the customer that we're able to do that okay so th it's much more of a market uh, uh, mark what we call a marketing orientation so you'll see again this is like the, the top one on the last slide so it's very much a selling orientation so it's just about making stuff and historically this is where where companies were so up to kind of the 1960s it was all about making stuff that you were good at making it was all about production finding things like economies of scale driving the cost down and then aggressively selling that at, at a profit now we're interested in the customer and how do we um, develop products that the customer are interested in and um, so we recognize that you know that product that we've, we aggressively sold might sell once but if we really want customers to come back to us we've got to be delivering that that ultimate value and and uh, as time's gone on businesses start to make healthier products and you see that companies that fail it's often because they lack that customer focus or insight in, in, into changing customer behavior so often they fail where they've traditionally succeeded and then they start to fail it's because they fail to change with customer um, needs and customer perceptions okay so organizations that have this what we call a marketing orientation where they are really focused on customers have several other features so um they're obviously as we've said concerned for customers so they're interested in developing that real deep customer insight they have an interest in their environment so not just thinking about the the impact on the environment but what's happening in that environment you know how are things changing um is there anything that they need to adapt to they have a focus on competitors when we say focus it's obviously not the only thing they're looking at but they have an interest and they're aware of who their competition are, where new forms of competition are arriving from, and we'll look at that um, in a later lecture. They want to take action, so they're not just being becoming complacent like some organisations might do and sitting back and um, you know and not worrying about where they might and how they might need to change. Um, and they have this entrepreneurial spirit, so they kind of take risks. Um, they're not afraid to take those risks um, and. You know that they're resilient so they're able to um, recover from failures if you look look at an organization like apple for example and their history this isn't an organization that was always successful in fact for quite a long period of time they were relatively unsuccessful um, so you know don't assume that just because an organization is successful today that's how it's always been these tend to be resilient organizations that are able to learn from their mistakes and, and recover um and, and and still still have that desire to take risks that might um work out for them important point for us to consider and i want you to remember this it's really important throughout the module and for your assessments is that customers buy solutions not products okay so we might physically buy the product but it's actually what that product can deliver that we're after so if we buy a drill for example um, it's not the drill that we really want it's the hole in the wall that enables us to put a shelf up or um, you know to fix a picture to the wall uh, so it, it, think about what it is that customers are buying and often it's the solution um, um, rather than the, the tangible product itself that's really important and, and something that will continue to revisit throughout the module and so that idea of us buying solutions rather than physical products we can use the fab model which is features, advantages, and benefits. So we think about the features. So these kind of describe what the product is. And um, the advantages describes what it does for us, okay? And the benefit thinks about what it does for the customer and how that is linked to their needs, okay? So look at this, this tells us which kind of priority the features, advantages, and benefits have in terms of how successful we are. So you can see there that features in terms of just describing what the product is are relatively low in terms of success, whereas the benefits up at this end are high. So obviously, they're more important. Um, in practice, so this just tells you uh, kind of an applied um, example. So the features of products made from plastic, that's one of its features. Its advantages is it cleans, cleans easy, so it's easy for us to use. Um, and, the, and the benefit to the customer is it saves them time. Okay, so 
in the in the factory um we make cos cosmetics so we ma actually manufacture lipsticks um eyeshadow primer whatever it might be in the shop we sell hope so really think about what it is you're actually selling because most of the time the tangible product is, is kind of quite low on that um, list of priorities so you really think about why we buy mascara you know um it, it, is it about the, the the features of having the the wand and the tube and whatever it might be and what it's made from or is it the look and how it makes our customers feel when they're wearing the product that's that's more important how we create <coughs> customer value and it is as i mentioned earlier in the session it is this real balancing act between those perceived benefits so what we're getting from a positive perspective versus the perceived sacrifice so and we and we can break these down um, into different types of benefits so we get the product benefits like we talked on the last slide and the service benefits we the customers get a benefits from having a relationship with us um, and that that kind of loyalty and then we get those image benefits so how using that product makes us feel and how it makes us look to others um, and, and then knowing how we look to others because we're wearing or owning that particular product so all those benefits that we get are weighed off against the sacrifices we have to make so clearly um, in most scenarios it's going to cost us some money um, it's going to cost us some time so you know how much time and energy are we going to put into searching around to um, for these for these particular products and then the psychological costs so think about in the same way we might get image benefits think about are there any psychological costs to wearing or owning this product you know sometimes you might drive a you know a, a really expensive car you know like a porsche um and you get a lot of image benefits from that but equally is the kind of do we feel a bit guilty when we're driving that do we see people and think oh do they think i'm a bit flashy so are there some psychological costs at the same time as there being um image benefits so think about it as this equation that we're trying to balance all the time and, and it's up to us as an organization to ensure that that equation is balanced with benefits coming out on top from a customer point of view able to provide that customer value and balance in that um, equation allows us to develop competitive advantage so if we if we are able to provide a perceived benefit that's greater than our competitors that's different to what they do that becomes a competitive advantage so it's not just about being different because it has to be different in a way that's relevant and interesting to customers so we could offer lots of differences in the things that we do as organizations but they might not necessarily be things that the customer is interested in and therefore not be a, a benefit per se so that would not give us an advantage but when we do deliver on customer benefits and and provide something that's greater than the sacrifice and therefore provide value because we've enhanced that equation and um, we do benefit from competitive advantage which is what pretty much everything in business is about achieving that competitive advantage okay you will revisit this idea of competitive advantage throughout your degree so even in final year um, those of you that will be doing the branding modules um, you will find that we talk about sustainable competitive advantage so I've already talked you through this kind of me too being the same as everybody else so no difference the idea of a competitive difference is doing something different to our competitors having an advantage because that thing that we do differently is something that the customer is interested in and then that becoming sustainable so just think for a minute what makes something sustainable what's the difference between competitive advantage and sustainable competitive advantage well when we have a sustainable competitive advantage it means we have something that's not easily replicated by our competition so many things we do um you know we lower our prices um we develop our service or our packaging those can all be um replicated to some degree by our competitors so we're really looking for creating value that's not easy to copy okay so that we can sustain our advantage we can keep it over a long period of time um so how do we do that okay we achieve it by thinking about what we're good at so what our internal capabilities are with the resources that we have 
against the external opportunities. So it's important that we know as an organisation what are our strengths, okay? What are we really good at? And how does that compare to our competitors? Do we have some capabilities that might give us a source of sustainable competitive advantage? Because it's something that our competitors can't do. What resources do we have? Money, human resources, skills that allows us to engage with any opportunities that might arise and we think, oh, right, OK, this is something that we can take advantage of. So just revisiting how this all comes together. OK, so we think about what products and services are we going to sell into which markets and what is the basis of our competitive advantage? And ultimately, what solutions are we going to provide to our customers? Remember what we said earlier, that customers provide, that customers buy solutions, not products. So we really need to be clear how we're going to present that value in a way that, that is attractive to customers. And when we put this into action, we think about the marketing planning process. OK, so some of you might be familiar with this. Um, and this is essentially what you are going to be doing in the module as a part of it. All right. So we think about where are we now? So what's our current situation? What resources do we have? And we look at ourselves internally as an organisation, but also what's going on in the external environment. Where do we want to be? What are our objectives? What are our goals? What is it that we're trying to achieve? How might we get there? So that's our strategy and then moving into our plan and then measuring here how things are going. So you can see here the basis of a, of a marketing plan. So we start off with a marketing audit, which is the where are we now? Um, we, we summarize that in a SWOT analysis. And some of you might be familiar with SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Don't worry if you're not, because we're going to come back to that later in the module, as we are all of this. Setting some objectives in terms of where we want to be, thinking about what our core strategy is, and then developing those marketing mix decisions before moving into making sure we implement it, implement it effectively and that we're able to measure it um, as well. So remember, from a, from a customer point of view, we have to convince customers why they should buy from us. Think about what we've said already. You know, we expect more. Um, you know, we're becoming these kind of prosumers, if you like, because we we can read reviews and we become experts in certain areas. We've got access to extensive information and access to other customers as well. We actually perceive that there are fewer differences than there might actually be between different products. So it's difficult for us. But we're not experts in the products per se. So it's difficult for us to know what the differences are unless organisations are telling us. And we tend to be less brand loyal. We're a bit more savvy. Um, you know, we're aware of different um, marketing techniques. So we tend to shop around a little bit more. So think about how can you convince a customer why they should buy from you and not your closest competition? So the fundamental starting point of these questions, why should anyone buy from us as an organisation? What is it that we're actually offering to them? Think about that customer value. You know, what is it? What are the solutions that we're providing and promising? What are our differences to who we're competing with? So, what what are the differences with what somebody could get somewhere else? Um, and are there are there kind of advantages that we offer? Do we deliver on what we promise? Whatever we say to customers that we're going to do, we are either through our brand or our communications, we must deliver on that. Remember what I said at the beginning: we only ever fool a customer once, if that. OK, before not only do they never come back to us, but they will tell everybody else about it. too. So just to finish up, then, guys, um, remember that customers buy solutions and that's where we need to focus our, our minds as organisations on what those solutions are and what that value looks like. They're always weighing this equation up, obviously not consciously. Um, but thinking about what benefits do I get from this product or service and what sacrifices do I need to make? So it's that kind of weighing, weighing up, balancing those scales. And the ultimate end goal for us as organisations is this ability to deliver competitive advantage. That's what organisations are really, really interested in. Um, we can never rest easy, as you can see, with lots of organisations facing problem, problems today. Um, so we're constantly having to know what's going on in our environment, what's changing, how do we keep up with that. Um, so thank you for um, listening to the podcast. Um, 
and watching the podcast. Uh, I will see you in the um, session, the lecture, later next week. Um, and if you've got any questions, please feel free to see me at the end of that lecture.